Hello, welcome to the lecture series on advanced VLSI design course. I was uh, talking about VLSI testing in last couple of lectures. So, today we will discuss little bit more in detail about built in self test. A background of built in self test was already discussed in the last lecture. So, we have seen that if we use built in self test in that case one of the very important aspect that it will brings in is field, field testing. So, that means here now your, your manufacturer device you can, can test as and when you want to test without using very ex, expensive tester. Then and the uh, other advantages it can brings in are like reduced testing and maintenance cost it will have very low uh, test generation cost because we are not using uh, automatic test pattern generator that takes um, uh, months to to generate the test it we don't need to to store the the, the large signature and and uh, la or large uh, test vector as well as the test response for for the test of the, the device we need very very simple automatic test equipment that can facilitate us to apply test. As I discussed in the last class that here we need only one pin that can initiate the operation and, and can say that, that yeah now just start the, the built in self test and tell me whether it device is good or bad. And now here because we need very uh, simple tester that is inexpensive, so we can, can test large number of devices in parallel and and then here the, the because we can apply the test at a speed the test time would be shorter and then here the, uh, the another very important feature is that uh, we can test at functional system speed. So, that means here we operate circuit at the, the functional speed hence it may discover many more defects. So, these are our, our couple of uh, advantages we have. If you look at the, the architecture in that case here what we need? We need three different additional entities to, to help us testing the, the device. So, you have circuit under test, you need a test generator. So, that means here there would be a hardware test a pattern generator you need to have. You need to have a test response collector that can collect the response, compare with the golden response and then, the, then here it will tell you whether chip is good or chip is faulty. And in order to, to control all these activities here we need to have a test controller. So, the, these are the three essential parts of, of built in self test we must have. So, now here we, we have to apply the test pattern at the primary input and collect response from the primary output. So, that means here the patterns generated by, by the built in self test must be multiplexed with the primary inputs with using a multiplexer that would be controlled by the test controller. And then we have to collect the response directly from, from the output of the circuit. So, now here what it can test and what it cannot test. So, it can test all the faults in the, the circuit under test it can test all the faults in the, the built in self test hardware, but it because here we are not accessing directly the primary input. So, if there is a fault in this, so now here primary input line itself may be faulty that means it is connected to ground line or, or, or open or, or connected to, to VGD in that case here we may not be able to test that. And then here in the same way where the, the output uh, we, we line we are not exercising hence uh, we may not be able to test. So, the, these are the, the part which, which are cannot be tested if you use built in self test. Okay. So, now let us look at uh, these components one by one. Let us first start with the hardware pattern generator then we will go to the uh, output response uh, analyzer. So, let us see how hardware pattern generator can work. So, what are the various ways? There are there are many, many ways. Uh, I mean sometimes it looks bit weird that we say that that we want to build complete pattern generator on the on the circuit that can generate deterministic test. One of the simplest way that one can think of is we generate the test by using automatic test pattern generator ATPG and then you store the, those patterns in ROM. If we do that, 
say we have millions of patterns, we are storing those millions of pattern, patterns on, on ROM, it, it may take huge area on the chip and that, that, that may be too expensive. Other way is we can generate test pattern exhaustively with simple hardware. Like for example, the, this is one of the hardware that can, can generate exhaustive set of 8 patterns and and in the, the, the same way we can build a hardware that can generate for 16 inputs for, for 50 inputs and more, more than that exhaustively. The again here if, if we generate patterns exhaustively the problem is test application. As we have seen in very beginning that if you apply millions of or, or sorry the exhaustive test pattern in that case here it may take several centuries to apply same thing holds good here. So, hence we cannot apply these pattern in reasonable time or, or practically on the circuit though we can generate this using some cheap hardware right. So, this is not practical if, if n grows beyond beyond 20. So, then the, this is not very attractive scheme. So, so far we discussed two schemes, one is we can store pattern on the ROM and then make use of those patterns that is impractical. The other um, scheme is exhaustive test that is also impractical. So, now here the, the other alternate is pseudo exhaustive that means here we do not generate really exhaustive pattern, but it looks like uh, we are generating exhaustive test pattern. For example, so what do we do? We partition circuit based on the pair in con uh, of the, the outputs and see that which are the inputs affecting the that particular output. Based on that, the based on the inputs which are affecting that particular output, we generate exhaustive test for that. Like for example, the, the this is a circuit with two outputs. So, output H and output F. So, this is the fan in cone of, of output H and this is the fan in cone of output F. So, now, now here it has total 8 inputs, but here only these 5 inputs are, are affecting this output H and only these 5 inputs are affecting output F. So, now here these 3 inputs and these 3 inputs are, are, are affecting only the x 1 to x 3 are affecting only H and, and x 6 to x 7 are affecting only F. So, if I generate exhaustive pattern for these 5 and exhaustive pattern for these 5 in that case here I, I, I can get the similar kind of confidence that I am getting through uh, exhaustive test. So, now here if, if you look at how many patterns we need for 8 input we need 2 raised to, uh, to the power 8 that means 256 patterns, but here now I am dividing that in, in 2 sets uh, each of 5 inputs that means here from each of the set I am, I am generating 2 raised to the power 5 inputs and then there are 2 sets. So, that means here to total 64 inputs. So, there, there is a, a good amount of reduction in the number of patterns we can have, but still if you go beyond say 50 inputs or, or 100 input in that case here again this approach turns out to be impractical hence we cannot use this approach as well. So, now here what are the way ahead? If we want to implement built in self test, we have to, to generate test patterns which can be applied in reasonable time. So, now here the one of the approach that can that it can be explored is random pattern test. As we disc, uh, discussed in very beginning that there can be multiple pattern for a single fault or one fault in other word one fault may have multiple test pattern. If I generate some patterns randomly, let us see for example, here on for this gate say this is 4 input gate and if I want to, to generate a pattern for stuck at 1, there are various combinations. What, because here for stack at 1, I want 0 here in order to excite that. So, now here there are various combination 0 1 1 1, there can be 1 0 1 1, there can be like here 1 
1 0 1 there can be 1 1 1 0 there can can be be like here 1 1 1 uh, 0 0 and so 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 and so forth there, there, there are so so many combinations all are able to detect this is to get 0 fold. So, that means here if I generate pattern randomly in that case here I am likely to detect the, this particular fault. So, so that means here random generation could be one of the, 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 the uh, approaches and, and uh, if you look at, uh, at the, the, the fault coverage in that case here you may get a curve like this. So, that means here very quickly you may get good coverage, but after that this coverage is started to become saturated. So, for many of the, the, the circuits the curve goes like this and which is admissible. So, that means here a couple of, uh, of like here for this particular circuit 100 patterns may can give you about 99.9 percent fault 99 percent fault coverage. Whereas, if you want to achieve 100 in that case here you may need to apply 1000 patterns. Look at here the, the 10 pattern itself may give, give you 80 80 percent fault coverage. So, that means here if you apply random pattern in that case initially you you may get very high co coverage and then then slowly it will start to saturate, but for some of the, the circuits the curve may go like this. So, this grows very fast, but then here it will quickly saturate saturated and that happens due to the, the circuits which have random pattern resistance. So, one of the, 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 uh, the random pattern resistance that comes from like here for example, again the, 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 the same uh, circuit I, I, I discussed like here if I want to generate test pattern for stuck at 0 uh, stuck at zero fold here that means here I want 1 and then there can be only one pattern that can excite this. So, that means here the, the I have to generate this pattern and so, so for the, the 4 inputs there can be 2 raised to the power 4 that means there can be 16 pattern and the probability of generating this pattern is, is 1 by 1 by 16. And say if I, I, I generate only few patterns uh, say, say 5 pattern in that case here probability of getting this pattern is, is very low. And, and hence here we may not be able to detect this particular fault and these kind of, 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 of circuits are, are called as random pattern resistant fault circuits. So, these so if you have large number of such kind of, of, of uh, patterns in uh, or, or uh, patterns which are, are needed to be generated here you may not be able to, to achieve very high coverage, but by and large for most of the, the, the circuits you are likely to get this kind of this kind of curve. Hence, here if we do random, so but here the, the, the key issue is the, the pattern must be random. If they are not random in that case here you may not because it may be biased and you may not be able to get this curve. So, now there, there are two questions, first is how we generate random pattern. And second thing is, if I can generate the, the random pattern, is it sufficient? So, the, the answer of first is it is very difficult to generate very or, or purely random patterns, because here always you are generating these, these, these patterns with some algorithms and, and, and hence here they may have repeatability. So, and, and hence you may not be able to, to get this kind of curve. That is one of the, the issue. Second, even assume I, I, I can have very good random pattern generator that can generate, but if it is random then the problem is how would I be able to compare the response of the circuit whether my circuit is good or bad, because I do not know the, the uh, response, uh, response of the circuit when it is fault free, because I do not know wha what pattern it will generate on the fly. So, that means, even if I have very good uh, random pattern generator, it may not help us. So, then what is the way out? We need by and large the random nature of the patterns and second thing is these patterns must be generated algorithmically. So, that here they, they, they have a repeatability that means, we can simulate these patterns and generate the golden response of the circuit and then eventually we can compare with the, the golden re re response. So, 
now, now the, the so that means we have to generate these patterns algorithmically and the, the, the approach is the, the pseudo random pattern generation. So, now here let us look at how we can generate these pseudo random. So, that means here by and large the, the nature of pattern that we are generating that means here the, the, the mixture of zeros and ones that should be should be uh, random and we we so that means it preserves the randomness and this should be be uh, deterministic one of the very simple circuit could be the linear feedback shift register so if you have a shift register say this is the the you have three flip flops and there is a feedback fro from the, the the last flip flop with some modulation by intermediate value here and i i i feedback here so now and, and now here in this if you look at how how it say say i initialize this to 1 1 1 then how it will progress so initially it will have 1 1 1 value now after that in the the, the second same time cycle what will be the output this is a sync synchronous circuit so now the the this zero and, and this 1 and 1 will give you zero so next time here output would be 1 1 0 1 1 1 then then the, the very next cycle the output would be 0 0 1 because this one will shift here this one will shift here so and now now in the third cycle this 0 1 will give you 1 so this will be 1 0 0 then this 0 0 will give you 0 so you will get 0 1 0 then this 0 1 will give you 1 so this will be 1 0 1 and then here the uh, again this 0 1 will give you 1. So, this will be 1 1 0 and now here this 0 1 will give you 1 and then here 1 1 1. So, now again we get back to the, the same value. So, now here how many inputs it is generating 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 inputs I, I, it is generating. So, that, that means here this can with a very small circuit we can generate a sequence of all uh, se sequence of seven vectors exhaustively if you want to generate from this circuit of, of three three input in that case here it, it may be eight so that means here we are generating nearly exhaustive pattern sequence and now here if you look at the the, the placement of zeros and ones it is it is fairly ran uh, random it is it, it, it is much different from uh, your counter that, that you may may use to generate so now, now here a, a linear feedback shift register can be one of the random pseudo random pattern generator. So, it generates the patterns algorithmically that means, these are repeat, uh, repeatable that, that is very important because we can simulate that and, and it has most desirable random uh, number generation property. So, these are the, the, the properties uh, we, we have though here we want to generate as long sequence as possible because here that, that is good for the, the fault coverage long sequence means here it should repeat after large number of number of, of test sequences but here really we do not need uh, the, the exhaustive to raise to the power n, n sequence though we want long sequence so now here what you need to have is you you have a, a feedback from the the first flip flop to the last flip flop and if the, there are n number of flip flops we have and then here you ca can tap input from some intermediate points. So, now, now here you, you can represent the, the, this by a matrix or by a polynomial if you say polynomial in that case here that can be represented by 1 plus h 1 x plus h 2 x plus h 3 x square plus so and so forth h n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus x raised to the power n. So, if you if you write down that that as a matrix in that case here these, these are the, the output values at time t plus 1 and these are the, the, the current value in the, the flip flop x 0 to x n minus 1 and that can be given by this matrix that is called as companion matrix. This has some pro properties like in the first column the last bit is, is 1 that comes from the, the feedback from the first flip flop to the last flip flop. This h 1 to h n minus 1 these values can be 0 or 1 based on whether you are tapping that value or not and then the, the rest of the, the this matrix is identity matrix. 
So, the, 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 this is the property of this. So, x t plus 1 is, is T s into x of t, where t of s T s is the companion matrix. This uh, works on the, the Galois field theory, wherein the multiplication by x serve as the right shift in LFSR and addition operation is a simply XOR operation or, or modulo 2 operation. The T s companion matrix, the, the properties I already explained to you, this gives you the near exhaustive sequence. So, that means, here other than all zeros, it, it can give you, all, it may give you all the sequences. So, that means, your cycle length may go to 2 raise to the power n minus 1 that may I, it, it excludes 0, because here once it goes to, to 0 is uh, all 0 states, it, it may never come out from that and, and hence that, 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 is, that can never be generated. So, this is one of the, 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 the implementation of that and uh, the other implementation here you have a feedback or XOR gates in the feedback path, you, you can generate the same property by Placing. So, now here in worst case, if you are tapping input from all in that case here, there can be a sequence of n XOR gates from the, the, the last flip flop to the first flip flop. So, now uh, and, and that may, may consume or that makes the, the, the system slower. So, now here in order to, to improve that, the another LFSR is proposed, wherein the, the you, you, you place the XOR gate in the feed forward path and this generates the, the, the same, same sequence. If you look at the companion matrix of this in that case here, companion matrix of the, the modu modular LFSR is the transpose of the previous one. And now, now here you, you are reading tabs, these tabs from left to right, whereas in the in the standard LFSR you are reading these tabs from right to left, that is the, the, the difference. And now uh, again here the, the, the same characteristic polynomial remains same as 1 plus h 1 x plus h 2 x square up to uh, h n minus 1 x raised to the power n minus 1 plus x of n. If you want to achieve the, the long very long sequence in that case here the, the, the polynomial that you implement or characteristic polynomial that is given by, by this ex expression is should be a primitive polynomial and what are the, the, the conditions for the primitive polynomial? The one of the condition is that it, it it must be a monic. So, that means here coefficient of x and term must be b 1. So, that means here it always should have 1 plus x raised to the power n term. If you look at here in that case here it should have 1 plus x raised to the power n term. These terms may or may not be there. Then the, the, the other condition is that the characteristic polynomial must divide the 1 minus x raised to the power k or 1 plus x raised to the power k. So, like in, in, in the, the, this previous example, I can write the characteristic polynomial of this as 1 plus h 1 x. So, we are tapping from here. So, in that case here, this is 1 into x plus we, we are not tapping anything from here. So, 0 into x square plus x cube. So, this, this is 1 plus x plus x cube. Now, now here let us see whether this is primitive polynomial or not. This is generating the, the, the longest sequence of 7, hence it should be a primitive polynomial. So, what are the conditions? So, condition says that this should be, be a factor of 1 plus 1 minus x raised to the power k or 1 plus x raised to the power k because it follows the modular theory. So, and, and where k is the, the, the 2 raised to the power n minus 1, where 2 uh, n is the number of leaf loss that we, we have. So, it should be 1 raised to the power k, where k is 2 raised to the power n minus 1. Here in this case, n is 3, hence k would be 7, because there are 3 flip flops I am using. So, that means here, it should be the, 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 the function of a factor of 1 raised to 1 plus x raised to the power 7, and that must have 1 plus x raised to the power n as mandatory term in that, right? where n is here 3. So, that means here that must have 1 plus x raised to the power 3. Let us look at the, the, the factor of this. Factor of this would be 1 plus x, 1 plus x plus x cube and 1 plus x square plus x cube. These are the, 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 the factor of 1 plus x. Keep in mind, the, we are using the modulo theory. So, that means x plus x is 0, because uh, plus is XOR operation. So, now here let us look at which factor is qualifies for this. This factor does it qualify? It does not qualify because, because here it has 
it does not have x raised to the power 3 term. So, here this is unqualified term. Now, look at this, this has 1 plus x cube. So, that means here this is qualified term. This has 1 plus x cube term. So, this is qualified polynomial for LFSR that can primitive uh, this is primitive hence it can give you the, the, the longest sequence. So, that means here I can have a modular L, uh, a L and LFSR that can generate. So, now here this is one of the, the, the LFSR that implement 1 plus x plus x cube and another LFSR could be like here the both will give you different sequence, but the, the, the length will be, be same 7. So, the and, and, and this will implement 1 plus x square plus x cube. So, this way you can you can generate a, a long sequence. So, now here the, the uh, we, we discussed that how we can generate the, the, the test test sequence. So, the, this can give you the ne nearly exhaustive as I said that we are not interested in exhaustive sequence, but we we are interested in a long sequence. So, that here our fault coverage can be, be, be uh, very good or uh, in other word I can say that we can quickly achieve very, very high fault coverage. So, that means here the, the nature of the curve that we were looking for can be, 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 be like this, where I say this, this is 100 percent and these are the, the, the test vectors. Okay. So, so here we, we, we are we are interested. Most of the time in, in practical systems, because of we have some of the random pattern resistant faults, hence we may not be able to get, get, get very high fault coverage even after running LFSR for long time. So, what do we do is we go to, to, to some reasonable state and after that because the remaining faults are not covered by this because because the, these faults are, are random pattern resistance. So, these are the, the, the random pseudo random pattern resistant faults and so, so now, now here and almost all these faults do need a unique test. So, what do we do in practice is we generate test using LFSR and achieve say 90, 95 or, or, or 90 percent fault coverage and after that here we, we do the fault simulation we find out how many faults are remaining. For the remaining faults we go to ATPG generate the test using ATPG and then here we burn the, the, those vectors in ROM and put that ROM. So, first we run LFSR to, to, to exercise the, the test pattern on the chip and then after that we use the, the top up pattern from the, the, the read only memory where we, we, we store those deterministic test. So, the and, and because here the, the, these patterns are very very small in number. So, hence here we do not need, need big RAM. So, this is the, the way we generate test if we use the built in self test. Now, the, the, the second qu uh, question is how we collect the response and, and then here how I compare with the gold, golden response. As we know that here we are generating the pseudo random test patterns, uh, these are the repeatable hence so we can do the, the simulation and we know what would be the, the, the real output of the, the fault free circuit. Now, the question is we can one way is we can store the, the, the this response in random access memory sorry a read only memory and compare again here if you store everything on read only memory in that ca case here the number of number of bits you need in rom would be very large hence that will consume lot of, lot of area so what we need to do what we can look for is we can look for is the reduction of, of volume of that data and one of the, the, the ways rather than using the, the, the real data we can compact that data generate some signature like for example when you go to bank 
nowadays bank do have the the photograph and they they come they match the photograph and all these things but uh, still if if you write a a, a check they, they they don't don't look at the the photographs they they just compare the the, the signature so signature are uh, signatures are are representative so you you can can have the, the the compact storage of the signature and and then you can you can uh, Compute. So now here, let, let's say for example, as, as see, uh, you have 500, 5 million random patterns generated. They, there are 200 outputs. In that case, you need 1 million bits. And then here, uh, this is very uneconomical to to store 1 1 1 million bits. So now here we need we need compaction. So wha what could be the the way to to generate the signature? The the one of the problems could be. Like even if you go go to to bank, somebody else may sign, and that looks like same as uh, your your signature. So that means there is a little possibility that other person signs, and and that matches with your 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 signature. That is known known as aliasing. So that 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 means here due to information loss, a, a signature of of good and bad circuit matches. That is known as aliasing. So now here when you generate signature, here we have to be careful that here aliasing should be, be, be as little as possible or ideally there should not be aliasing. Then we define two terms one is the compaction and another is compression. Compaction is, is drastic reduction in, in bits in the, the original circuit response and then here the, the, we lose some information. So, that means here the, the, this is irreversible process from the compacted response we cannot, cannot get back the, 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 the original uh, response. The other term that you people are, are well familiar with is compression like here you do zip. So, wherein you, you, you compress, compress the data and then here you can again expand it to, to the, the same original data. So, the, the, those are, are lossless. Signature analysis is another term that we define. So, the, what it says is that, that here compact good machine response into a good machine signature actual signature generated dur during the tested and uh, testing and compared with the good machine signature that's the, the, the so we have to 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 compact the good machine signature store somewhere that needs lesser memory space and then we we compare we uh, again generate the signature on the fly from the the circuit under test and match with the stored response one of the way is that here we can use the transi transition count in, in the bit stream. Like here for example, if this is the circuit, if I apply a bit sequence here, so in, in 5 different cycles, then here what I will get, get is, I will get this as, as response when it, it is a fault free and, and when it, it, is, it is faulty. So, now here when it is fault free and, and, and faulty, here both of the, the, the responses do have different transitions. So, here if you look at there is only one transition from 0 to 1, whereas in this here you can see there ca can be, be, be two transitions, one is from 1 to 0, then 0 to 1 and the, the, then again 1 to 0. So, there are three transitions. On the same way at the, the second output, here there is one transition and here the, the, there is also one transition. So, if you look at only this output, in that case here you have distinguishable transition of fault free and faulty machine. Whereas, on, on, circuit, uh, on, on output 2, you may not have distinguishable number of transitions for fault free and faulty circuit. So, if you happen to have only one output say x 2 in that case here, you cannot if you use the, the, the transition count, you cannot distinguish whether machine is faulty or, or, or fault free that is known as aliasing. Whereas, if you have only say, say x 1 in that case here, you can distinguish that. So, what we want is that here aliasing should be as small as possible and here in this I, I do not want to go in detail the, the aliasing an analysis of this, but here the, the, the aliasing probability goes like this. So, so if there are n uh, number of inputs that you are compacting in, in, in k, so for the, the, the very low and, and very large like here if the, the number of transition is, is either 0 or 1 in that case the, the, there are only few possibility sorry uh, the, the, this will go from here. 
So, na, na, now here, but here when, when the, the number of transitions are somewhere in the middle range, the aliasing probability is, is very high. So, transition count is though it, it is very easy because here you need to, to XOR the previous input and, and, and the, the current input generate the, the, the output using this, this one XOR gate and, and then here you can, can get count the, the, this using a counter. Uh, and, and so, the, the, the transition count is, is one of the, the easy, easy mechanism, but aliasing probability is very high. The other solution is that you can use simply an XOR gate and if you, so that, that means here all inputs here you, you can compact in, in one. The problem with, with, with XOR gate is that if your fault effect propagates at, at one of the, the, the input in that case here, always you will get, get, get fault effect at output. But if fault effect propagates at, at two places, then here it will mask the, the because the, the, the generated signature would be same as the, the good machine signature and hence it, you, you, it will go unnoticed. If it prop, uh, propagates to, to odd number of, of, of inputs in that case here, you will get distinguishable signature hence you can detect. So, this can detect the error which propagates to one or odd number of, of inputs, but this cannot detect if your uh, fault effect propagates to um, uh, even, even number of uh, outputs. So, now, now here the, the if you look at the, the, the pro aliasing probability in that ca ca case here aliasing probability would be roughly half or, or 50 percent that is that is too that is very high. So, now, now, now here we, we have to devise. So, once transition uh, means transition count was one of the methods this is uh, use of one XOR gate is, is also another method, but here the trans, uh, aliasing probability is very high. So, most of the, the time it is not very usable method. So, now, now, now here the other way is we can use the, the, the cyclic redundancy code which uh, were uh, in use in communication systems for long time. So, what do they do? They when they, they transmit a bit stream they generate some redundant bits um, uh, from these uh, data bits and send along with the, the data and then when you, you receive at the output you try you regenerate that if there is a match in that case here you can uh, say that, that your, your transmission was good otherwise uh, the, there was an error in the, the, the tra transmission. Same concept we can use here we can generate the, the, the CRC codes from, from the, the given bit stream. So, now here we, we also we can treat data bits from the, the circuit primary output and uh, we can compact that, that in, the, in the decreasing order of polynomial which is uh, can be given by, by LFSR. So, now uh, means the, the, the circuit that we can use to compact is again here the, the LFSR kind of, kind of circuit or, or wherein we have linear feedback the shift register. So, now here when you, you, you scan it through through the, the LFSR, here it will gen generate a, a redundant code. So, say the, this is this is a LFSR whose characteristic polynomial is x 5 plus x 3 plus x plus 1 and then here through this uh, x or gate here you are uh, combining the, the input bit stream. So, say this is the, the in input bit stream and initially say we initialize the, the this feedback uh, shift register to all 0 values. Keep in mind in LFSR we do not have any input bit stream, but here it, it accepts the, the, the input. Now, here let us look at what are the, the, the what it will generate. So, if you look at it starts from all 0 states and then when you will have you will receive this bit stream 1001010 then here the, the, the based on on the, the, the lfsr characteristic polynomial it will give you the, the output and at the end after the this 8 bits here we will have 10110 so this would be, be be available in the in the the flip flops so we have four flip flops they, they this would be the five flip flops this would be data in the flip flop I can write the, 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 this as a polynomial that uh, means 
1 into x raised to the power 0 plus 0 into x raised to the power 1 plus 1 into x raised to the power 2 plus 1 into x raised to the power 3 plus 0 into x raised to the power 4 that that combines to 1 plus x square plus x cube. In the same way I can write a polynomial for this in input a bit stream that is uh, your, your 1 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 and that I can, can represent by polynomial. The same thing you can obtain by division operation. So, now here say this was x 7 plus x cube plus x is the, the, the polynomial of this data this is x plus x cube plus x 7. So, the, the, this is input bit stream that is divided by the characteristic polynomial. So, if you look at here the characteristic polynomial of this LFSR is x 5 plus x 3 plus x plus 1 and then if you use the modulo theory and, and, and do the, the division in that case here you will get remainder as x 3 plus x square plus 1 that is same as the, the, the remainder in the flip flops. So, hence if you divide this by the characteristic polynomial you will get the, the remainder. So, now here if the, the, this remainder matches with the, the correct response that we obtained after the logic simulation in that case your circuit is good and otherwise circuit may be bad. This may result into some sort of aliasing because here now aliasing would be much better be because, because of, uh, of a you have multiple flip flops. So, now if you look at the, the, the aliasing. So, say the, there is a bit stream of n bits and there are k flip flops. So, now here you can have 2 raise to the power k uh, combinations of bits generated from this one and out of 2 raise to the power n combination. So, now here the, 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 the 2 raise to the power n divided by 2 raise to the power k pattern will result into the, the, the same same pattern. Out of these pattern, so there the 2 raise to the power n minus k out of that one pattern may be good and other patterns are just aliased pattern. So, minus 1 is the, the good pattern. Out of this 2 raise to the power n are the total pattern, but out of that one pattern is, is good which is compacted others are, are, are bad. So, the, the, this would be 2 raise to the power n minus 1 this is the, the, the probability of aliasing or probability of masking. This if, if you say if n is, is greater greater than k in that case here this raise to this is equal to 2 raise to the power minus k. So, this gives us very good uh, observation that here now if you use LFSR in that case here masking probability will not depend on the number of inputs and, and that will depend only on the number of flip flops that you have in the circuit. So, if you want to reduce that that masking probability you can have more num more number of flip flops in the in the, the circuit. So, now here so far what we discussed is that for every primary out output you need to have one LFSR that the or, or one signature register that that is typically known as single input signature uh, register SISR. And so, so if you have single in, in input, so the, this is your, your, your circuit output you have one single input signature register for another one you have again single input signature register. And, and so, now, now here you say you are getting n inputs in, in n number of cycles and then you, you are compacting the, the, this in, in k bits uh, where k is the number of flip flops that you have in SISR. Now, here it has k in flip flop here, k flip flop here, k flip flop here. So, so now, now, now here hardware overhead is, is too much, but if you look at this, this SISR this is a, a, a simple linear feedback shift register, this is linear system. If it is linear system in that case it should obey the principle of super, superposition. So, now here if it follows that in that k, k, case here now what you can do is you can combine all these SISR into one and then you can form a multiple input si signature register and now here if they so that means here in multiple input signature register one uh, in input you are you are multiplexing here another input you are multiplexing here another input you are multiplexing here so if you have k number of flip flops in that case here inputs from k number of in primary outputs of the circuit you can can multiplex here 
and and now here they if you want to to find out because this is linear system and and this is the the companion matrix of this uh, lfsr then you can can write equation to uh, for the the output in the next cycle x0 t plus 1 that would be companion matrix multiplied by the, the pre current values plus the input arrival at at this point in time so d0 d1 and and, and d2 so here you can can again the companion matrix will remain same it should fo follow the, the same property that we we, we discussed earlier okay so now here if you use lfsr lfsr that is known as multiple input signature reg register misr and if you use then again here the masking probability will remain same as 2 raised to the power minus k where k is the number number of flip flops we have in the uh, in the, the, the circuit so now this can give you very compact res response it needs very less hardware if you compare with the, the previous approach that we, we we discussed with the transition count in that case here you can say that in in a circuit this is the good value there are three inputs and and, and this is the, the the good value and if there is one fault uh, at stuck at one fault at a input stuck at fault at b input and stuck at fault at f input that is f output so now now, now here the, the these are the, the 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 responses so here if you see now this output if you use the, the transition count it may not be, be, be able to, to detect the output. So, the, this, this can give you the, the, distinct, the, the difference between the transition count and LFSR. Okay, so, in summary here I can say that, that LFSR we means uh, the built in self test is wonderful approach that can give you facility to apply test at any point in time that means your chip can test itself and hence we can use that for the field test. And so, this allows you the, the at a speed test and, 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 and field test. Okay, this completes the, the, the built in self test. Now, so far we discussed about the, the test for stuck at 0 fold. Let us briefly discuss about another kind of circuit that we have and the, those are, are let us say memo, memory type of the circuit. So, in memory, here it is a very special type of circuit wherein it uh, does very specific job it stores value that value can be 0 or 1 it should retain that value until it is rewritten by the system. So, now here what so if you look at the, 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 the memory structure in that case here it will have have the, the, the cell it will have the, the row decoder and, and, and column decoder to, to enable one of the particular cell and you want to, to read by, by using the, the sense amplifier or, or if you want to write you can, you can, can write on to that particular cell. So, now here look at how complex algorithm I can afford. One way is that, the, that here one thing is shall I go for the, the, the logic test kind of approach wherein you, you model every fault as is stuck at 0 or is stuck at 1. We do not need that essentially for memory because it does only restricted operation. So, hence here we can make, make a functional fault model for the, the memory test and now here what that functional. So, now, now here say if I have n number of cells and assume that I do one operation with, with every cell. In that ca case here the, the complexity of my algorithm that I, I run would be n. So, that means here n operations I do. Let us say I run a test at, at say 16 me megahertz. In that ca case here if you, you, your memory is, is, is 1 MB it will take 0 0.06 second if it is 4 MB it will take and now here you will easily have 2 GB, 4 GB, 8 GB, 16 GB kind of memory and it will take say say if it is 2 GB 128 8 seconds if you, you run your test. If you look at if the complexity grows to n log n or n raised to the power 3 by 2 or n square that means here you, you do n square operations with every cell in that k, k, case here it may go, go, go to several hours and, 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 and you, that, that is impractical. So, that means here you have to devise a mechanism to test memory which, which has complexity as n. So, that means here you can have fixed number of operations with each and every memory cell. 
So, now here as I said that, that, that here memory does some restricted function, now we can, can generate a, a simplified functional model for that. So, you add you place address for the memory, address decoder will dec decode the address, it will ex enable one of the memory cell and then you will read or write that and, and you will get if you are reading in that ca case here you will get data out. So, now there, there can be a fault in the decoder, so that means your decoder may uh, decode enable two cells or multiple cells or that may not enable any of the, the cells. Your memory cell that may stuck to, to always logic 0 that may stuck to logic 1 or there may be a coupling between the memory cells. So, that means here if I am reading or writing one memory cell it will also affect the another, another mem memory cell. So, if you look at the, 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 the functional fault model in that case here I can categorize this fault model in four different categories. One is stuck at fault. So, that means here any any element can stuck to logic 1 or, or stuck to, to logic 0. So, that means it may not have transition. Transition fault means here it may not make a transition from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So, that means if, if you, you have stored 1 in that case it may not go, go to, to, to state 0 or there can be a coupling between the, the, the two, two cells or if they, the, there is some specific pattern around your cell in that case here, it may invert the, the, the value of the, the cell. So, now here in order to test this, here the, the simplest approach that was, was explored was you what do you do is you initialize memory in some particular state say you you have 3 by 3 array. So, you initialize all the, 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 the so you can go in any order and, and initialize all the, the, the these bits to 0. So, that means here you are writing 0 to all the mem mem memory states and you can go in any order order of, of, of address. Then what do you do? So, this is like here you, you, you are marching from the first location to the, the last location. Then wha wha what do you do after that? Next time you come back and, and see, first read the, the earlier written value. If it is 0 in that case that cell is, is, is good that means here that can store value value, value 0. So, the, the, there is no, no stuck at one fault there. So, now what you do is you read the, the, the this value that is 0 and then here you again rewrite that to 1. So, now here you, you, you read that value and then here you, you write 1. Again here the, the second one you do the same thing, third one you do the same thing, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. In case any of the, the cell is stuck to logic 0 in that case here that was not able to, to make a transition to, to 1 and then you can detect that immediately here. So, now here you can in this you, you can detect stuck at 1 fault, but here you are not able to, to detect stuck at 0 fault. What do you do in the, the third time? You can come back and now here read these values. So, if you read this value again here is if, if it is 1 in that case this is correct, if this is 1 this is correct. So, again here you, you march from first location to, to last location. So, that means here you are reading 1 and then so, so, this ca can detect stuck at 0 fold. So, now, now here how many operations? So, now, now here this one first you, 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 you initialize the, the, this memory in, in all 0 states or all 1 states. Then here in, in one order of, of address. So, maybe either from first to sec last or last to first here you read first the, the earlier value compare with the, 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 the earlier written value and then then change to, to the, the, the inverse value. So, read 0, write 1. You finish this, then the, the, the next time here again you, you start either from the, the, the last value to come to, down to the first or first to last and the, the, then so let us say you, you come from first last to first and you, you read all these values. This can detect all stuck at, at fault. And now here how many operations with one cell you need to do? Here for all the these cells you are doing n number of operation. Here with every cell you are doing two operations in that case here 2 n number of operation and here n number of operation. So, that means here total 4 n number of operations you are doing. So, that means here you are accessing if uh, if say 1 microsecond is the memory access time in that case and, and you have say 
9 memory cell in that case you need 4 into 9 into 1 microsecond as 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 the the, the test time for this memory that is known known as mars test so there are couple of so so here in this not notation here we say this is mars 0 mars 1 and and mars 2 so uh, there are there are various mars tests were were proposed you can can go through the, the various mars test and if you look at the, the what they detect the, the the very basic test that is known as mats that i i discussed that it has complexity as 4n and it can detect all stack at fault this can detect some of the address decoder fault if they, they, this may not detect all address decoder fault whereas the the, the mats plus that is augmented by by, by by again here w 0 with the in the third march. So, that means, you are writing back, back 0 and here you are you are you are going in the forward direction here you are going in the, the reverse direction that makes sure that you will also detect the, the all the, the address decoder related fault. So, now, now here this will consume this ca can detect all the these faults if you look at the complexity of various algorithm in that case here this will be the, the, the complexity. This example I have already given you, so I, I, I skip. So, now here if, if you look at the memory, in that case here we are following certain pattern and if you follow certain pattern in that case here always it is easy to, to implement that as a built in self test. So, what we are doing? We are generating address right from the, the first to last or last to first and we are writing some single bit or we are reading sing, single bit for that. And so now here for that you need to to have a pattern generator. The, the, this pattern generator is nothing but it's it's a, it's a address generator. So now you you need to have a counter or LFSR that can generate the the, the rising address and, and and falling address, and then you are you are writing that that value to to that particular memory, memory state. So now here it may so what is important here to to uh, to detect a fault is you have to go in certain order of address, and when you come back you have to come back exactly in the the, the reverse reverse order of, of address. So the 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 memory is is, is one of the circuit that's most favored by, by built in self test and practically now all the memories are coming with the built in self test. And that is why you can when you power up your, your, your laptop most of the time you might have observed that, that it will start to, to uh, test the, the memory. So, so that, that here you, you can always um, make sure that, that your, your memory is, is good. Sometimes we have some additional rows and columns. So, once you identify a, a bad row or bad column, you can replace that, that bad column or, or bad, bad row by the redundant row or, or, or column and, and hence here you, you can fully make use of your memory. Thank you very much. Good day.